So here's an interesting phone that you guys may not have heard of, depending on which market you're in. This is the A70 from Samsung, and it's interesting for a couple of different reasons. Now, the reason I'm looking at it right now is because it recently became available in Canada along with other A-series devices. I have never seen an A-series device prior to this. This one, the 70, is interesting to me in particular because it has some features that actually go beyond, are actually a little bit better than the flagship Galaxy S10 Plus at a much lower price point. This thing is around 500 bucks though. Some people have found it for less. You're getting a 600 series Snapdragon processor, six gigs of RAM, expandable storage. It's got a triple camera setup on the rear. It has a tiny little teardrop style notch, a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and 25 watt charging, fast charging, which is actually better than the S10, S10 Plus. It's the same charging speed as the 5G version of the device, which is of course way more expensive. So let's crack into the box and take a look at what we're working with. That's the device. It's got a kind of a cool hue thing happening on the back. Ooh, look at that. It's got this cool gradient situation. It's that color shift. You see this on sports cars sometimes. It's green, it's blue, it's purple, it's everything. It's every color in the rainbow. Of course, it's got the ultra wide on it, which for me is a must. Apparently the construction is some sort of uh, metal plastic hybrid. Considering the weight, considering how slim it is, it's very surprising they fit a 4,500 milliamp hour battery in here. Alongside the Snapdragon 675, you gotta believe it's gonna be one of the best battery performers out there and it's gonna charge really fast with the 25 watt charging. You still have a headphone jack as well down on the bottom, USB type C, dual SIM card, expandable storage. So you could slap a 512 gigabyte SD card. And I know a lot of people like that. It's versatility in the phone. So this mid-range part of the market is obviously heating up. And Samsung, they're not gonna leave it alone, right? They're not gonna just leave it up to Oppo and Vivo and OnePlus. They're gonna have their own play at that part of the marketplace. You have the type C cable and the 25 watt charge brick. All right, so we got the device set up. Now you can see the, the beautiful display. Now this might surprise you. You may not have noticed. This display is actually bigger than the S10 Plus. This is 6.7 inches. Now, no hole punch. Instead, you're left with the teardrop style notch, sort of. It's a small notch. I would probably still prefer the hole punch, but like when you consider the package deal, the price, the display size, the fact that you still have AMOLED here, the bigger battery, and now you're like, huh, this is confusing. I don't know, do I want an S10? Or maybe all I need is an A70. I'll pocket the uh, few extra dollars. Of course, it doesn't have the top tier Snapdragon, so you need to take that into consideration. But how many people are really maxing out their processor? How many people are doing multimedia stuff like beyond the typical game? This thing can run whatever game you're gonna throw it. I mean, you could, we play PUBG on here, no problem. So I get it. Some people just want to have the top tier performance, but there are some advantages to the lower tier chip as well. You may see some improvements in battery life and so forth. So it's worth thinking about. So it's got the in-display fingerprint scanner, which I assume is using identical technology to the S10, S10 Plus. You can see how it operates there. These things, they're imperfect, right? In-display fingerprint scanners in general. It's cool technology, but it's not as fast. This is sufficient, this is fine. I've been using fingerprint unlock, but you can tell it's a second of lag there. It's just It just takes a second longer. It's worth noting. Let's go ahead and check out the speakers. I'm a bit curious, like where did they save the money on this? All right, we'll load up a Lou Later video first. You were a part of it, you witnessed it. Mm -hmm. Toronto Raptors, world champions. This grind is long in the playoffs. You know, I, I feel like I've been in, I feel like I've been in the playoffs for a while now watching this. That's a lot of display, 6.7 inches. I mean, these things, they keep on growing. People are obviously gravitating towards bigger screens and as the bezels shrink down in scale, you can get these big displays without much trade-off. The sound, I don't know, pretty average. Uh, in 50 states and Puerto Rico from 2003 to It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty clear. That's maxed well, out. Well, you think my OnePlus is brighter? This is a comparison, OnePlus 7 Pro, versus the A70. Price-wise, I guess we're kind of close. In the case of the Samsung, the A70, 479, somewhere in that territory, converted to USD. OnePlus device, more expensive, 669. This one has the curved glass, pop-up camera, and 800 series Snapdragon. So, obviously, it's a kind of a tough comparison, 
but maybe you want Samsung. Maybe you want One UI. Maybe you want the big battery in here. Who knows? It's up to you. But you can see screen-wise, it's kind of comparable. We should uh, do a speaker comparison too. And doing it all in, in the replies and just be like, ugly, hate it, not buying it, stuff like this. Well, that makes sense when you're doing a really secretive product. Okay. The original. Okay, so mono sound just coming out of the bottom part of the device. It's okay. It's not as good as the OnePlus device, in my opinion. Screen-wise, though, I put them in the same territory. This one, of course, has the notch on it, so you gotta remember that if you find that to be offensive. No pop-up camera here. We did have a pop-up camera device in here that wasn't that expensive. The Redmi K20 Pro, that thing kind of blew my mind. The spec list for money, the value for money. I think maybe I call it the value champ. All right, what about those cameras? Are they as advanced? As S10, who knows? You kind of have a hard time believing that they would be. Boom. All right, ultra wide. That's quite wide. And zoom. So one of these cameras must be just for depth because we've only got the two options here. There's no zoom here. Samsung does a good job with the cameras. Well, look at my hand makes it into the wide. It's quite wide. And then the, uh, the zoom, you can see more typical focal range 32 megapixel selfie camera okay so let's do the beard hair test well that's what we do uh a wide and i guess a standard it boots into standard by default i'm gonna use the wide oh it was trying they were trying to beauty me jack you know that's a no-go can't do it it's a no-go try to beauty me okay beard hair particles on the shirt remember the particle the shirt particle test Little fibers, Otis hairs. You know, not the best I've seen. It's good. It's good. I wish it had a little more contrast in it. You know? Uh, what can I say about this phone? I think it's a cool package, to be honest. I wish it was available to more people in different markets. If you're in the US, you're probably not seeing this device. Now that everybody's buying their phones outright, I know this sounds strange to other parts of the world. For a long time, it was on subsidies, you would get a tab. People wanna own their devices, go to whichever carrier, bring your own device. That's what people are doing more frequently now. So what does that mean is that cost shopping, value for money comparisons are happening more frequently in North America. And now there's a place for devices like this. I consider this to be a value device. What are you giving up? Is it that much? I guess the construction, it feels a bit cheaper with this uh, hybrid materials. You could say to yourself, hey, those cameras are not quite as good not quite as versatile. You could say to yourself, hey, I want the top tier Snapdragon. Also valid. So I think it's a compelling package. I think it's an interesting choice. I think it's a Galaxy device worth knowing about in relationship to the flagship. The rest of the world, they've been spoiled. So many series, A series, India's got the M series from Samsung. It's more Samsung love, it's more Samsung choices. It's the A70, part of the A series. Definitely worth looking at for Samsung fans and pretty much everyone.